Hi, I'm Tim Morris from Cincinnati State Community College. As an aircraft maintenance technician, we're working on multi-million dollar aircraft sometimes. These aircraft are sophisticated and complex. So we have to be able to find all kinds of technical information about these airplanes to do our job. Today, I'm going to talk about manufacturer publications. These are publications that are made by the people who build the airplane. We're going to talk today about aircraft maintenance manuals, a specification called the ATA-100 or the I-SPEC-2200 specification. We'll touch base on a illustrated parts catalog. We'll look at the structural repair manual and service bulletins and service letters. So starting out with the maintenance manual, here's a maintenance manual. This is the document most people are familiar with. This tells us how to do our job. If we look at this maintenance manual page, this is out of a Piper uh, Cherokee uh, 181, a, a Cherokee Archer airplane. We've got a picture of, it looks like it says it's the rudder trim control here. And they show us numbers and they point to parts and they show us how this thing is put together. You'll also notice that if we look at the top where the text is, up here where it says D, it gives us step-by-step -step instructions. It says clamp the rudder pedals in a neutral position with the threaded bushing in the mounting channel. The next step, step E, says with the rudder pedals neutral and no pressure, install the assembly cover. So this is telling us step-by-step -step how to take apart or put together this device. Next step, it's showing rigging. So this is what a maintenance manual shows us. This is the most familiar thing for most people. Here's another picture out of a maintenance manual. This shows us a fuel strainer in the fuel system. So this is the type of information we're going to have with us when we're working on different airplanes. The aircraft maintenance manual is published by the aircraft manufacturer. It contains service information and this is what's called FAA acceptable data. I want to talk about the difference between acceptable data, what the FAA calls acceptable data, and approved data. Acceptable data has a different standard of, of uh, reliability in that data, and it depends on if the FAA reviews it. The, an old story that's been used to explain this over the years has been that I have a daughter, and I'm very protective of my daughter, and a young man wants to date my daughter. So the young man comes and says, hey, I'd like to take your daughter out on a date. We're going to go and see a show at 7 o'clock. We're going to stop and get something to eat after the show, and we will be back at your house at 10 o'clock. I say that is acceptable. That's acceptable with me to, go, to do that, to go out on that date, take my daughter, who I'm very protective of. Uh, the young man comes to me another time and says, I would like to take your daughter to the church picnic on Sunday. We're going to eat ice cream. It's 2 o'clock after the, in the afternoon. I'm going to be at the church picnic, so I'll be able to see that everything is on the up and up. And he says, can I do that? Uh, church picnic's over at 6 o'clock, and uh, we'll be back at your house at 6 o'clock. That's approved. I will approve that. Okay, so the difference between acceptable and approved, really, after we get done joking about it, the difference between acceptable and approved is that the FAA very specifically reviews everything in that document, and then they put their seal of approval on that document. So it's, it's been reviewed to a higher standard. Let's talk about ATA codes. What are ATA codes? So ATA codes... You'll find them in your book. The manufacturers got together a long time ago and said that let's have a standard for how we number and designate everything in our manuals, in our, in our publications, how we specify what parts go where. So in the past, when I was working on something like a Cessna airplane or maybe an older airplane, an Aronka, uh, I would go to the maintenance manual and I would find maybe the wings were in chapter 12 and in for another manufacturer, uh, maybe the wing section was in chapter 4. And things were in all kinds of different locations. Every manual was different. Every service manual, every maintenance manual I looked at was different. 
So the manufacturers and the airlines all got together and said, let's have a specification. So let's put things all in one grouping that makes sense. So the ATA codes, if you look here, um, if you look, for instance, at ATA 12, ATA 12 is servicing. So if I go to a manual for Boeing and I want to find out how do I put oil in the hydraulic reservoir, it's in Chapter 12. If I go to Learjet, servicing hydraulic fluid, putting hydraulic fluid in the reservoir, it's in Chapter 12. All these different manufacturers are now going to put servicing information in Chapter 12. So another example is Chapter 27. You can see it's down here, flight controls. Here's Chapter 27, flight controls. So let's say I'm going to work on the aileron of of an airplane. So where would I find that if I go to the maintenance manual? It's in Chapter 27. And let's look here. Chapter, here's 27 broke down. We have 27. We have 27 double zero, 2701, 2710, uh, 2720, 2730. It goes down through the numbers. So if I go over here to the right and I look, aileron control system is 2710. All right, so that's a further breakdown. So what this is, is the ATA spec is a industry standard and we will use it for numbering and how we designate different parts of the airplane. We'll use it in parts catalogs, we'll use it in maintenance manuals, we'll use it all over the place. So we need parts for the airplane. We found what's broken, we've, we've pulled something out that's broken, and now we got to find the parts. So where are the parts? Are they in the maintenance manual? Nope. We have a document because there'd be too many things in the maintenance manual. We have a separate document called the Illustrated Parts Catalog. So the Illustrated Parts Catalog, also called the IPC, shows us a picture and a listing of all of our parts. This is a wheel assembly we're looking at. This is a wheel assembly on a Piper airplane. And let's say that we need to replace the wheel bearing. Now in here I can see here's this looks like a wheel bearing to me. It's got the number 3 by it. But all the parts that I need, there's also like a locking ring, and there's a felt seal, and there's a spacer, and there's all these things in here. Um, that go with it. So if I need to order parts, here's my parts catalog. Item number three here. This is a uh, wheel bearing here. It says cone, but it also says Timken bearing right here. This is what they're calling my wheel bearing here. Um, I never heard it called a cone, but they seem to, Piper calls it a cone, so that's what we're going to go with. And here is my part number for that cone. If we look at these columns, we'll notice that there's a part number. There's, up here it says figure and index number. This 26-1, well, we're 26-3. 26, 26 means this is figure 26. So if I look at this page here, down here at the bottom, it says figure 26. I have a column that is the part number. I have a column that says code. So what's this code? Well, there's no code by my bearing, but by, up here by wheel, there's a code A, B, or C. If I look down here, it's like a footnote, and it tells me that there was different wheels that Piper made for maybe a heavyweight kit, a lightweight kit, different serial numbers. Here's my description. The number required says that for the cone, that there's two cones, or there's two bearings required. Okay, that makes sense. So that's why I've got the number two in this column. The last thing is serial numbers affected. So I might need to know the serial number of my airplane to decide which part actually goes on my airplane. So that's the Illustrated Parts Catalog. Next, we're going to talk about structural repair. Things like trucks that hit an airplane. A catering truck backs up to our 747 and to put food in the galley. And they miss and they run into the airplane with the truck and they damage the structure of the airplane. Bad. So what are we going to do? We're going to throw the airplane away? No. We're going to repair the structure. And that's why we need a structural repair manual. Here's a Boeing 767 structural repair manual we're showing you. Uh, here is another one on a uh, Air Force series airplane. But the structural repair manual will show us how to repair the structure. Here's a simple, uh, uh, looks like a leading edge rib repair. Um, 
and they show us how to do that. This is mostly things like sheet metal and structure of the airplane. The structural repair manuals for structural repairs, like sheet metal repairs, this document is another one published by the aircraft manufacturer. It contains repair and alteration information. Now this document is called FAA approved. It has a higher standard of review from the FAA. We open the first page, you'll see the signature of the FAA. So this is an FAA approved document. The next thing I want to talk about is service information. Sometimes we have things that don't end up in the maintenance manual because it's something that just recently happened. So we're finding a certain part on the airplane is cracking. Mechanics have been reporting from the field that we've we found some some cracks in some of these parts or and and this is something that's going ongoing that it just pops up all of a sudden and we need to address it. So manufacturers will issue what they call service letters or service bulletins. Now here's a service letter here and this is a Cessna service letter. It says mandatory, but the manufacturer is not the government. They don't write the laws. They say it's mandatory, but for something to be legally something you have to do, it has to be have an airworthiness directive. Now, maybe this will be tied to an airworthiness directive. It will be something that the FAA comes out with an AD note and they say, do the work to this service letter. Okay, but, but Cessna is calling this mandatory. They're, they're not the government. They can say, we want you, you have to do it, but they can't legally make you do it. But the feds can, the FAA can. So in this service letter, they're showing us this is a spar cap, and a spar cap is part of the wing assembly, the spar cap carry through. And they're showing us repair information here. They're showing us an illustration down in the bottom. And this is going to tell us how to either do an inspection or how to repair the part. Here is a zoom on the title page of this service bulletin or service letter. They're really about the same thing. And it says, Wings, Detailed Inspection of Forward Spar Upper Cap. And it says down here, the reason is cracks have been found in the spar cap. The undetected crack can cause the spar cap to break, which could result in flight instability and potential loss of control. This would be really bad. This one here is probably going to have an AD note with it. When they first come out in the beginning, sometimes these things do not have AD, sometimes they do later. Not all service bulletins uh, are this severe. Some of them are sometimes have uh, information that's not as critical. Service bulletins are considered non-regulatory unless the FAA issues an AD note and says this service bulletin must be done. Now we have an AD note, we have a service bulletin, and that makes it regulatory. Okay, so unless there's an AD note, some have AD notes tied to them, some do not. No AD note, it's non-regulatory. If it has an AD note, it is. They're published, service bulletins are actually published by the aircraft manufacturer, as all these documents in this presentation. They contain service information, inspection information, sometimes repair information. And they're required they're mandatory only if tied to an AD or some other special requirement. This is FAA acceptable data unless it's tied to an AD. And if it's tied to an AD, it's FAA approved because an, F, an airworthiness directive is law. And the FAA has to approve it if they tie it to an AD. So if I have a service bulletin by itself, it's FAA acceptable. If they come out with an AD note and say, do this service bulletin in my AD, it's FAA approved. So here's what we covered today. We talked about aircraft maintenance manuals. We talked about the ATA 100 spec and 2200 spec, which is the numbering system, the standardized numbering system. We talked about the illustrated parts catalog and how we find parts, how we order parts. We talked about the structural repair manual, which tells us how to repair structure. That's an FAA approved document. And then we also talked about service bulletins and service letters. I'm Tim Morris for thank from Cincinnati State. Thanks a lot for watching.